Crystal again. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little ruffly bag. It is now my favorite bag that I made. It is so cute. And in the light it just sparkles with the sequins. I love it, I love it, I love it. And it was really easy to make. You will yeah. need your four ply yarn and this red heart sachet with the sequins in it. See it, it's sparkling. It's really, really pretty. So let's get started on it. For this project, you're going to need your regular four ply yarn, crochet needle, or it's a five and a half millimeter. Okay, and then you want to start with a chain of 35. And I apologize, I know this yard is probably hard to see. But on the third chain from the hook, we don't count the loop that's on our hook. So one, two, three, we're going to do a double crochet into it. So we're going to yarn over, go in, pull the yarn through, and we'll have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and go through the first set of loops, yarn over, and go through the last two. And that's a double crochet. Okay, we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull your yarn through, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the last two. Okay, yarn over, go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the last two. Okay, yarn over, we're going to go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over, and pull through the last two. Yarn over and go to the next stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over and we'll go through the first set of loops. Yarn over and go through the second set. So those are all just double crochets. So we're going to continue that pattern one double crochet in each stitch across your chain until we get to the end just like this So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine to the end, and you stop here and I'll meet you right back up here. I made it to my last stitch with my row double crochet. So what we're going to do down here at the end, see I put my last double crochet right here in this stitch. We're going to be working in around, like this, around it. So. You want to put one more double crochet in the same spot, in the same stitch. So go in it and do a double crochet. So that last one has two in it. So now what you want to do is just keep going, working double crochets, one in every stitch. So we're going to come over to the next stitch and work a double crochet. And I'm going to hide that tail as I go. Just like that. And here's my next stitch. So I'm going to work a double crochet in it. And here's, you can see the stitches, maybe. It's just working one stitch. One double crochet in each one of these stitches. There. 
there. You can see them. So I'm just doing this in every stitch. One double. Just like this. So go ahead and finish that so we get back to our starting point. And I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. I made it back here to the end. And what we're going to do to close this round and every round that we do from now on is slip stitch into the top stitch of the very first chain through we made. So we just go in it, grab a loop, and then pull it through this loop. Oh, I'm hung up on something. We just go in at our top of our chain, pull it through. And that closes that round, and that's the start so far. Okay. And what we're going to do this time, and every time too, is after we slip stitch into that chain three, we're going to chain three again. And that's going to count as our first double crochet. And it's going to count as a double crochet for the remainder of the project. So since we got that, our chain three, now we're just going to yarn over and do a double crochet in every stitch. Just like this. Just one double in every stitch. Just like this. Oh, careful not to split your yarn. Some yarns are really bad at splitting. Just like this. And I've been getting requests for written patterns. Um, I, sorry, I don't have written patterns for anything that I do. I don't know how to write patterns and I don't know how to read patterns. So I just make these up as I film. This person I'm making right now is the purse that you'll see at the beginning of the film. I just film it after it's done and then I cut it and put it in the front of the video, if that makes any sense. So I'm I'm sorry about that. I just don't have patterns and I don't know how to write them. I don't know how to read them. So I always just kind of wing it as I film. So just do. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me. It's probably boring. One double crochet all the way around. When you get to this end, just continue around with double crochets all the way back up here. And then. I'll meet you right back up here at this spot. Back here to close off my second round. And again, I want to slip stitch in the top of this chain three space. Right up here. To close it off. Just like that. Okay, that's what we have so far. Now this is what we're going to do now. Probably going to need to flip it inside out to like where here's my tail. I'm just going to push these corners in and make that on the inside of my bag. Just like that. Now, the reason why we do that is we're going to have to have a stitch on the outside to um, sew that, that ribbon yarn on with, or we're going to crochet it on. So, we need a stitch on the outside. So what we're going to do now is, remember, since you have this, we got to have this part on the inside, the part where your, your tail is going to show. That's going to be the inside. After we do a row of double crochet, two rows of double crochet, since we did two, two rounds of them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to slip stitch in every stitch across. So we're just going to go into the next stitch. 
and slip stitch. Go into this next one. Slip stitch. Next one. And slip stitch. Here we're going to do this in every stitch all the way around. Slip stitch in the top of all these double crochets. And what this is doing is creating this row of stitches. You just you can't see them that well. Shouldn't have used black, I guess. On the outside. And that's what we're going to crochet that ribbon yarn into later. That's what, so it'll be on the outside of the bag. It's just making a row of stitches on the outside. That's all it's doing. And that's what we want. And you want to make sure your bag is right side. Otherwise, if you won't be able to see the stitches on the, on the other side. So, like I said, the part of the bag where... If you sewed your tail in, it would be on the other side. Plus, you can tell by looking at it that which side's the right side. The right side looks better, so you want it to be on the outside. You can, you'll be able to tell by looking at it. So, you want to just continue to do one slip stitch in the top of every one of these double crochets, all the way around again. Until you get back to the beginning. I went ahead and made a small swatch of a different color so you can see it. So pay no attention to the size or the rows of stitches because they're not correct. But this is what it looks like after you do your row of slip stitches. You have that row on the outside. And that's what we're going to attach that ribbon yarn to. This row. So once you get back here to the beginning and you slip stitch into the last stitch, you need to chain three and then we're going to work two more rounds of double crochet. So we're going to work them. You'll see the stitches on top of the slip stitches. And that's what we want to work them into, like that. And then like here's the slip stitch. Right there's the stitch that you want to do your double crochet into. Here's the slip stitch and then right on back of it or on top of it or is the stitch that you want to do it in. Slip stitch this stitch like that. Slip stitch. Slip stitch. And right here's the stitch that we want to go into. Right on top of it. Just like that. And that's making the row of slip stitches more pronounced. So you can see them better now. If you turn it this way, you can kind of see that top row a little better. You just want to make sure you don't get that slip stitch in it. So we have something to sew that ribbon yarn in, or crochet that ribbon yarn in, into. Just like that.
Okay, so now you'll be able to see them slip stitches better. Okay, I'm going to do that with mine. And I'm going to do two rows of double crochet. Chaining in the, or slip stitching in the chain three like we talked about. And then chaining three to begin the next row. I'm going to do two rows. Oh, two rounds of double crochet. And then I'm going to do a row of the slip stitches. And then I'm going to do two rounds of double crochet. And then a row of the slip stitches. And two more rounds of double crochet. In a row of the slip stitches. And I'm going to continue that process until I get to the height I want for my purse. And you can make it as high as you want. Um, I'm going to do mine and I'll let you know how many that I do. But once we get to the height of the purse, we're going to add like maybe a little brim and some handles. So you have to account for that if you're just going to do it for as tall as you want. But I'm going to go ahead and do mine and I'll let you know in a minute how many rows I did. Remember I'm going to do two rounds of double crochet around the slip stitches. Two rounds of double crochet around the slip stitches. Two rounds of doubles and around the slip stitches. And so on until I get to the height I want. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. Okay. Just ignore my ruffles. I'll show you how to put them on in a little bit. Um, I did ten rows of double crochet and five rows of the slip stitch. So my final row was a slip stitch. So now we're going to put the handles on. I just jumped ahead of myself and put this on earlier when I wasn't filming. But I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So, and I tied off and everything. So we can start fresh with a clean piece of yarn. And just start over here in the corner somewhere. And remember to start on top of your slip stitches. Just like we did earlier, how I showed you. Stick it in there, chain one to start, go back in that same stitch and do a single crochet. And then we're going to do one single crochet in every stitch across. And we're not working into the slip stitches, we're working into the stitch above just like we did previously. So it's pretty much the same thing we were doing, but now we're just doing a single crochet on top of the slip stitches instead of the double. So go ahead and finish that. Just one single crochet in every stitch around on top of the on the slip stitches just like we did before like I showed you with this here was the row of slip stitches and we did double crochets on top we're doing the same thing that we did before only we're just doing it with a single crochet like this and then slip stitch right behind it. But we're just doing singles like that. Just like that. So go ahead and finish that one single all the way back to your starting point. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my row of single crochet. And you just want to slip stitch into your first single crochet to close that round off. Now we're going to do some decreases. So we want to chain one, and then we're going to do um, five single crochets and then a single crochet decrease. So we're going to go back in the same stitch, do a single crochet, so that's to be one, go to the next stitch, single crochet, two, the next one, three, the next one, four, and then the next one. Five. Now you want to do a single crochet decrease, so we're going to go into the next stitch, grab a yarn, pull up a loop, 
two loops on your hook, so we're just going to go into the next stitch. Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, and go through all three. And that's the single crochet decrease. So now we need to do five more regular single crochets in the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then single do single crochet decrease. So we go in the next stitch, grab a yarn, pull up a loop, go directly into the next one, grab a yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all three. Okay, five more single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. So, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, go directly in the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all three. So you want to repeat that pattern of five single crochets, three, four, five, and then a single crochet decrease after that. Go in the next one, pull up a loop, go through all three. So complete that, five singles and then a single crochet decrease all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, I'm coming up to my row here and I did a decrease and I only had like one stitch left so I just did a single crochet in it. If you have a couple stitches left that's okay or a couple less. It doesn't have to equal out evenly. It doesn't have to be equal to five. Okay so on my last stitch here I'm going to put a stitch marker. I'm just going to use a piece of yarn to mark my spot because we're not going to slip stitch anymore over here we're going to do continual round of single crochets. So I got my stitch marker in here and I'm just going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and that stitch marker is going to mark my beginning spot. So I always know where I started. And if you can keep track without a stitch marker you don't have to use one. Now we're just going to do two rounds of single crochet one single crochet in every stitch around two times. So you're gonna do a single crochet in every stitch until you get to your stitch marker all the way around. When you get to your stitch marker you just move it up and continue the single crochet around again. So do that two times and I'm gonna do mine. Back around after my two rows of single crochet I'm back here at my stitch marker now we're going to start making the handles and you're going to need four stitch markers so I'm just going to use some pieces of yarn. So we're going to count over like from the corners here and here. We're going to count eight here and then eight here. We're going to put a stitch marker at both spots. So I kind of just eyeball it which stitch I think is the corner stitch. Just kind of guess. And then I'm going to count eight stitches over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to put a stitch marker in that spot. Just like this. And I'm going to do the same on the back side. So if I started here counting over eight, just count, start from the next stitch over. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should have 16 stitches in between this stitch marker and that stitch marker. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly in the right spot. Just try to get 16 in between. Then you want to do the same over here. Just start at the stitch. I really should have used a different color than black. Start at the stitch where your stitch marker is and this count over eight. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitch marker. And then on the back behind it here. So, and on this side, you should have 16 stitches in between your stitch markers. So, like that. So, load your needle back up over here from where you left off. Now we got stitch markers everywhere. <laughs> okay, here's our beginning stitch marker. And I'm right at it, so I'm going to pull it out and move it up like this and then I'm going to continue with my single crochet around one single crochet in every stitch around until I get to the stitch my first stitch marker over here so this one single crochet okay when I get to my stitch with the stitch marker I want to put a single crochet in it and then you can take that stitch marker out now we're going to do a chain, and this is going to determine how long your handles are, so you can really make it as long as you want. So let me do mine. So if you want longer handles, you make a longer chain. But I'm just going to do kind of short ones. So I did a chain of 15. Now I'm just going to stretch it over to this stitch marker and do a single crochet in the stitch with the stitch marker. And that ties that chain down. So I can move that stitch marker because I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to single crochet around to that stitch marker around and then I want a single crochet in the stitch with the stitch marker and pull it out and since I did a chain of 15 over here I'm going to do the same on the other side if you made a bigger chain you just do the same amount three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then stretch your chain over to this stitch marker, single crochet in the stitch that has the stitch marker to lock that chain in like that and then you can take that out and then we're going to single crochet back around here one in every stitch Okay, I made it to my spot with my stitch marker. So I'm just going to pull it out and move it up and continue around with single crochets. One in every stitch. And then when I get to this chain, I want to do a single crochet in every stitch on the chain. That's going to make our handles thicker. So I'm at the chain, so I'm just going to do a single crochet the length of the chain. Just one stitch in every, every chain space. And since I did 15 chains, I'll have 15 stitches. If you did more, though, you just have whatever you did. It's like this. Oh. Careful not to split your yarn. This yarn's been splitting on me the whole time I've been using it.
Okay, so I single crochet the length of the chain. Now I'm just going to go back and just single crochet around again until I get to my other chain. And then when I get to my other chain, I'm just going to single crochet in every chain stitch, just like I did on this side. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then up this chain and back around here and then I'm going to do a total of three rounds of single crochet so when I get to here I'm going to move my stitch marker up and that's going to be one round and then I'm going to go back around again and then up the length of my chain with single crochet back around up the length of this chain so I'm going to do that three times total three rows of single crochet and if you want your handle thicker you can do another row or two or however many you want all around a single crochet till you get the thickness that you want. So I made it back here to my stitch marker. So what I'm going to do to close the round is I'm going to slip stitch into this stitch that has the stitch marker and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And that just kind of evens out the top a little bit. So you can move that and then I will tie it off just go ahead and just weave it in the back a little bit a couple times Okay, that's probably good. Okay. This is what the handles are kind of look like. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to put this ruffly stuff on. Okay, you want to start at the bottom, that's what I did. So you should have five rows of it, since we did the five rows of slip stitch. And I already did four, I jumped ahead of myself, I'm sorry. So I'm going to show you how to do it on this row of slip stitches. So you get your, your stuff here, and you want to make it where the sequency stuff is down. We're going to be crocheting it up here at the top. So to start it off, stretch out, stretch it out a little bit, and then I always fold it in half, maybe about two inches or so over. And then you stick your needle at the end through both pieces, and then you come over here to where the last part where it's folded, like right here, and you stick your needle through them two pieces. So you got it loaded up like that. And then skip a hole or two. Grab it. Go into the hole. And then pull it through just like you're slip stitching through both holes. And that's kind of how you start it. That's just so when you start hooking it on the edge is kind of folded over so it don't look so bad. I'll do that again. So we're always going to be working in this top row of holes. So I fold it over, put the fold part in the back about two inches or so. Doesn't have to be exact. And then I go in here at the very end and I stick my needle through both loops. And then I fold it over and I find the last loop on the back match it up to the loop on the front like that go through both of them so I have the loops on my hook now I usually just skip a space or two just and grab it and I just pull that loop through the loops on my hook like a slip stitch 
just like that. And you got that on your hook, so you're going to come over here and just start somewhere in the corner. And with that loop on your hook, just stick your needle in one of the slip stitches that you made, like that. Once it's in there, you pull out this lacy stuff. And I always skip two or three holes. You don't have, you know, it don't have to be exact. Two or three. So, and then you just grab it on your loop, or on your hook, pull it through the slip stitch, and then through that loop on your hook. So what we're doing is we're slip stitching this stuff on. So you got that loop on your hook still. So go into your next slip stitch. Like that. See the slip stitch on my hook. Same rows of slip stitches that we did. Stretch your stuff out. Skip two or three holes. And put your needle in one of them. And we're going to pull it through the slip stitch and this loop on our hook. Through that one. And through that one. Just like that. So we're going to pull it to the side and go through our next slip stitch. Like that. And then skip two or three holes. Grab it. Pull it through the slip stitch and through that ring that's on the hook. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you on a piece that you can probably see better. Here's my little sample from before. So I'm going to hook it to these slip stitches so you can see it better. That, this row of slip stitches that I did on my sample earlier. Okay. So I'm just going to get it started again by folding it over about two inches or so. Needle through both holes there. Come down here to the end. Through both holes here. And then skip a hole or two. Grab it and then we're going to pull this this hoop through the two hoops on our hook. Or all the hoops on our hook. And that's how we start it. And then we're just going to stick it in our slip stitch. Stretch your yarn out. And like I said, I usually skip two or three of these holes. So, this is going to reach my needle up and grab one. And then I'm going to pull it through the slip stitch and through the th rings on my hook. So, through the slip stitch and then through the rings on my hook. Well, I messed up. Okay. Skip two or three holes through the slip stitch and through the ring on my hook. It really isn't this hard. I'm just fumbling around for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why. There we go. Yes! Yay! I got it. Okay. And then we're going to stick our hook into the next slip stitch. Like that. And stretch out our, our yarn. Skip two or three holes. Whatever you feel like skipping. Grab it. And we're going to pull through the slip stitch. And through that ring that's down there on the hook. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to go. Put a needle in the next slip stitch. That 
that. Skip two or three holes and pull it through the slip stitch and through the loop on your hook. Go and do the next slip stitch. Skip two or three holes, pull it through the slip stitch, and then through the ring on your hook. Okay, go into the next slip stitch, stretch your yarn out, skip two or three holes. Grab it, pull it through the slip stitch, through the ring on your hook. Okay. So we're going to just keep doing that all the way around in your slip stitch. Stretch it out. Skip two or three of the rings. Grab it. And then the ring on your hook. Just like that. And that will create the ruffles. It's really not hard. I was just making it look hard. But I don't know what was going on. But so you just keep doing that all the way around your ring of slip stitches you made. And then I'll show you when you get back up here. I'll go finish mine and then I'll show you how to close it off. To the end of my row of ruffles. And I'll show you, I just did it in my last slip stitch, so I'll show you what you do to tie it off. So you just stretch your yarn out here, um, cut a couple inches, leave a couple inches of slack. Just like that. And then I just cut a little bit up here, all the way to your edge. So you got that hanging, and then just cut this part off down here. That, just like that. So you cut this part straight and you got this little piece of slack hanging. I just kind of twist it up. And then I go back into the first slip stitch that I did. Like that, the very first one. And I grab this piece of stuff that I twisted and pull it through. And then I pull it through this loop that was left on my hook. And I pull it really tight. And then you can sew it in if you want. I don't ever sew it in because it's not going to come undone. I just clip it kind of shorter. Not all the way down. Probably like about a half inch there. And then once you fluff it up. The ends and stuff. You're not going to be able to see it. So... Since I cheated and went ahead before you, I got my all my five rows done. <laughs> so I am finished with this bag. So this is it, and this is what the bag looks like. It's really cute. It's really sparkly. You probably can't really see it that much on the camera. But I really love that sequence. This stuff. So that's it, and that's the bag. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Um, if you make the bag and I want to see a picture of it, um, I'll put the link to my the Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page below in the description. So if you want to click on that and post me a picture, that'd be great. Or just check out my Facebook page and see what I upload now and then. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so I can build my channel up keep doing tutorials. And until next time, have a good day.